right, good afternoon, live from Hudson Fields here at uh, Hazen Union High School in Hartford, Vermont. It is your Hazen Union Wildcat boys taking on the Montpelier Solons, Liz? Liz is alma mater, first pitch right there. Was that a called strike, Mike? It was, it was. Tyler Revard on the mound for the Cats. Lance Hall with the call, Mike Demand Baker on the call as well, Liz on camera. This is Taylor Nunley, a senior. Beautiful day Solis. here, Lance. We, yeah, kind Beautiful of very day. similar to the day we had for Lamoille last year, last week. It was, felt like last year. <laughs> Sun and clouds, a little breeze off the vortex. <laughs> oh, this strike. Count at one and two. Two and two. Three and, we're gonna call it three and two. And there's strike three, no matter how you call it, that's strike three on Nunley. Yeah, great start for Revard, he's looking sharp. Next up, Braden Adams, a senior for Montpelier. Hazen comes in undefeated, five and oh. Beat PA here, beat Northfield. They, we know we played uh, Montpelier in the opening game of the season. We did, yes, yep. Um, and I had uh, that written down in yep. my notes here. That was a tight game. Um, Hazen oh, won 5-3. 5-3, five to three. Five three, yep. James Montgomery behind the plate for the Cats today. It's Tyler's out front pitching. Hey, get square, right? I'm going to, uh, I still can't do it. I was hoping to go sans glasses. There's a high pop-up, is it? Over to right, Wyatt Flanders on his horse chasing. Doesn't come down with it. It's going to be extra bases for Adams. Holds up at two. As Flanders maybe lost it out there in the sun, or he had a long ways to run for it. I'm sort of on the line. Definitely another day with the wind swirling here. As it always is. Yep. Making really any play for the outfielders tough this and afternoon. Here in the shadow of the Hall Mountain Vortex. <laughs> Andrew Tringle, a junior. For Montpelier up now that I've got my glasses and my sunglasses back properly aligned here. Throws down the bunt, goes foul. So yes, Hazen opened up the win at Montpelier 5-3, then they beat Williamstown, we beat Lamoille here at home, beat Northfield on the road, and PA here at home yesterday in sort of a nasty day for baseball oh. by a score of 12-7. to At the end of the game, it was in the 40s, steady rain, wind whipping. Hazen will go on the road for their next three at Lake Region 8, at Danville, and at North Country on the 5th, 9th, and 10th of this month. Back home next Thursday, the 12th, against Spalding. Hey, White, looks good on you, kid. Pitch high for a ball. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. Let's go. There's a high slice off foul, way foul. Did it clear the cars? Cleared the cars off okay. the front door of the school. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice shot. Good play by Montgomery there, keeping that ball in front. We've got Adams on second for Montpelier. Inside. And Tringle takes his base, and that brings up Will Talbert, a junior for Montpelier. Good job by Revard starting ahead. The 
Liz, help me. Solens? I'm going to say this wrong every time. <laughs> it's like it. Asia Gould and Asia Gold. <laughs> Montpelier Solens. Oh, what do you got happening here? Uh, pass ball? Had strike two. I'm not sure how they'll score it. Pass ball or wild pitch. Not sure, but... Wildcats, of course, coached by Spencer Howard, assisted by Joe Rivard and Opie Upson, and the Solens, sponsor, uh, coached by Logan Cook and assisted by Andrew Holtz. Many thanks to John Sperry for letting me know the programs are over there to give us all the info so we can try and keep things as accurate as we can. And there's strike three. Big strikeout for Tyler there. Two outs, men on second and third. Cabot Hart, a senior who will be playing shortstop today at the plate now. Hart, strike one. There's a high pop-up right. Uh, it's going to land uh, behind the backstock, just behind the backstock. I thought you were going to have a play on hey. that for a second, Mike. Looked like I had a chance. Strike two, so Rebar ahead in the count now with two men on, two outs here in the top of the first. Strike three, struck him out. Up here leaves two men on, no score. We move to the bottom of the first. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Liz on camera, Mike Demand Baker here assisting me as well. Run our sponsors down one more time. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support A's and Athletics. And DR, property maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. I saw the doctor working some soil uh, down at Union Bank yesterday. Oh. Derek was down there working. Must have done it earlier before the rain came He'd, in. And yeah, yeah, it was, uh, actually, you know what? I take that back. It was Monday night I saw him doing that. Monday night. Monday night. Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon. Cody and I went down. I lose track of time. I've worked some extra shifts, some shifts that I don't usually work this week to fill in for people. And right now, I honestly don't know what day it is. Yeah, you get that happens, your, doesn't you, it? You get out of your rhythm, and it's just like, you know, you're doing stuff you don't normally do on a day that you don't normally do it. You just sort of lose track of it all. Oh, easy enough to do, for sure. On the mound, uh, Keegan Smith, a sophomore for Montpelier today. Behind the plate, we've got Nate Groff over at first base, Andrew Tringle. Second base is Nick Rubin. Third, Braden Adams. Shortstop, Kevin Hart. Left field is Taylor Nunley. Center field, Will Talbert. Right field, Jason. I'm going to go with Harry's. Did I get everybody? I think I did. Leading off today for the Cats is going to be Tyson be good, Davison. Be good, and I tell you, Mike, we talked last time about game uh, life going by fast. Uh, Tyson, I can remember substituting at Hardwick Elementary. He was in sixth grade. Yeah, it seems like yeah. yesterday. Yeah, it is amazing. It seems like yesterday. He and Carter Hill were in the same class, I remember. Yeah, it's amazing how time flies like that. It's crazy. He's putting together a solid year here. Tyson it, Davis in second base when he's on the field. Tell us what he's done, Mike. Well, he had, a, had some big hits yesterday in the game yesterday for sure. Got a big hit right there. Right to, is that short? Play over. Man, I tell you, over on first, that Andrew Tringle, he is a tall order over there. I didn't notice that when he no, was at he the is. Play. Now he that is. he's out on the field, he looks like about eight feet tall. Great target for those infielders. Yeah. Tyler Rivard, junior today. Pitching. Well, he's a junior every day this year, but <laughs> hitting today. Pitching today is what I'm trying to say. Pitch inside goes by. Tyler's going to stand still. Let me start this over. Number 15, Tyler Rivard, a junior who is pitching today up at the plate now. 
looking to get on base. Revert slices one off, foul, misses the cars. Count will be at one and one. We need one of those clickers up here like we the do, We do, we yeah. do. You must have one of those. I think right? I do have one or two of those yeah. kicking around. Yeah. That'd be awesome. It would be. Ball two. Good eye by Revard on a pitch just missing. Strike two, count it two and two. One out here in the bottom of the first. No score. High and outside. There's a solid shot to left. Revert to first easily. Takes a big turn, but he'll slow down and hang out at first base. Now help me, Mike. This is, am I pronouncing it right? This is Jazz? Jazz, yeah. Yep. Okay. Now what's the scoop on Jazz? I have not heard this name much. Yeah, he came from, uh, he played at U32 last year on their championship team. Very solid baseball player. Great addition to the Hazen roster. Awesome. Senior, be playing shortstop out on the field. Yes. He'll play yep. shortstop. Throw seen him also play it. Back. Yeah, he's also played at third, uh, done some pitching, so. Can do it all. Can do it all. Let's see if he can hit. There's a high ball. It's going to go foul. Way foul. Almost to the flagpole. Wind picks up oh, again. Oh man, man. We're gonna have to get those weighted vests from the king. Oh, those would help on a day like today, wouldn't they? I think the wind took that pitch high. <laughs> Would not be surprised to see Reaver going at some point. Hazen's been aggressive on the bases, but a little bit tougher with a left-hand pitcher up here. And there he goes. Throw down, Reaver in. Stolen second base. Whereas the line in Paradise by the dashboard like goes safe, safe at second base during the infamous baseball scene in that song. <laughs> I think it's Phil Rizzuto they have in that. Oh, that I, makes I sense. I think it's yeah. who they have doing the call in that. Yeah, that makes sense. One of the all-time greats. Absolutely. Full count. Rebar on second. Jazz. Looking to get on base and maybe knocking a run here. He'll take ball four instead. Travel up to first. This will bring up James Montgomery. James A. Jr. for the Wildcats. You got back? Wow, wow. Well, the throw was there, but I think he just got under the tag. Very fortunate for yeah. Hazen. Caught Rivard leaning towards third and didn't quite get the out. Runners at first and second. Rivard darn lucky to get out of that one. Montgomery up. Revard Smith out there having a little game of. What do you what do you want to say? One, two, three, stop Oh, now they've, oh they've got him. Now they've got him. Wow! And he's 
is it. Wow. Wow. Again, very fortunate. <laughs> very fortunate. A good hustle down to third, and now we have Jazz at second. No outs. And Montgomery, I don't think, has lifted the bat off his shoulder yet, has he? I don't believe so. That went high. Have you ever seen anybody steal home? I have. I have before. In a, in a high school game? In a high school game. I can't, can't remember that. I remember... Um, when I was a kid in, Bur in Burlington, they had the Vermont Reds double A farm yep. team. And I still remember as a kid a great steal of home to end the game. To um, end the game? To wow. end the game. It was what a great game that was. I saw I saw it in a Red Sox game once. That guy still home. In a, in a major league game? In a major wow. league game, yeah. You don't see that every day. Hit right at the second baseman. Can't make the play. And a little bit of confusion on everybody's point out there. And in the end, Tyler's going to score. Jazz goes to third, and Montgomery on it first. The player had the ball, and now Coach uh, Cook wants to talk to his team out there about yeah, that, base, basic infielding. That had potential double play written yeah. all over it off the bat. And said Hazen ends up with a run. That was that was a crazy sequence yeah. out there. So he just missed the play, and then it dropped, and he couldn't. Yes. Whether it was a spinner out there, yeah. or what, he couldn't come up with it. Montgomery hit it hard. And our guys were like, "Do we run? Do we not run?" Yeah, he did. He knocked the stuffing out of that one. And uh, Revard's aggressive base running paid off here, as he was able to score on the play. All right. So still just one out here in the bottom of the first. Cats up one zip now off of a wild zany play off of a hard shot that James Montgomery hit right at. Was that the shortstop that was over there? It was. Second? It was, yes. Jaden Baker up now. Take strike one. And there goes Montgomery down to second. Runners at second and third now. Delivery from Smith. And he pulls Tringle off. Tringle covers the... the Explain to me what all happened there, Mike. Oh, it was a drop third strike, so Baker could try to run to first on the play, and he he, uh, he beat it out. There's a little discussion here. Between Tringle and the infield. Is he, would he be called an infield umpire? He would be, yep. And now the plate umpire going out to speak to this gentleman as well. And I can see Tringle having words with the infield umpire as well, and he, he kind of held up his hand and said, Stop talking. When the hand goes up, the mouth goes shut, right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and now Baker is standing on first base. I think they're discussing whether they throw beat him to first base or not. And he will stay there. And the umpire will explain things to Coach Cook. Looks like he accepted the explanation. So run scored. And now the umpire going over to talk is uh, that's Spencer out there, right? Coaching third. And now they're calling Baker out at first. Well. Huh. We will accept it and play on. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was about. Uh, me neither. So now two outs. Hazen run did score. Hazen up to zip. 
and this is Andrew Menard. Up for the Cats, bottom of the first. Menard hits that one foul. Strike. Looks like the Montpelier pitcher here is trying to starting to feel get in his groove here. He's been pitching well. Hayes has been hitting well too. Menard foul. Two and two the count, two outs. Two nothing Hazen. Bottom of the first. Menard takes a big swing and takes strike three. And at the end of the first, it is your Hazen Union Wildcats leading the Montpelier Solons by a score of two zip on some aggressive base running, some sort of zany infield play, and some good hitting as well. <laughs> Be back for the second. All right, we're starting off the top of the second right here. Uh, Montpelier up at bat. The count is at one and one. And I'm trying to see who this is. I believe this is Nate Groff, a sophomore for the Solons at the plate now. Huh. Count at one and two. That hit sharp but foul. One and two. That one fell as well. As Groff keeps himself alive there at the plate. Good job by Revard again getting ahead here. Groff wants a new bat. Yeah, I didn't hear the ping. Was he using a wooden bat? Now he's got an aluminum. Down low, Montgomery keeps that one in front of him. Two and two the counts. Hits right at, I think that's Jazz. Yeah, that's, yep. Play over to Asia Gould. Good solid throw to first by Jazz. Nick Rubin, a sophomore. Four of Montpelier up now. Swing and a miss. We're going to have to have Liz tell us what exactly a Solon is. I looked it up with some type of Greek. Yes, it's like we we used to call the Greek wise man. Okay, okay. I knew it was something Greek, but I wasn't sure what. Strike two. It's like a politician because the Montpelier is the capital. Oh, it's like okay. The ancient politician station. All right, right. makes total sense yeah, now. It does. Yep. And strike three. As Ruben goes down swinging on three straight pitches. Reverb's really settling in now. He's throwing really well. Two outs. Uh, Jason, and I'm going to go with Harry's. H-A-R-R-I-E-S. I'm going to go with Harry's as opposed to Harris. Unless the E is silent, which it would be Harris. A senior. Take strike one. Strike two. 
That one's a ball. Counted one and two. There's the chopper to Jazz. Has a little bit of trouble with it. Comes up with it. Draws Gould off. Gould makes the tag. And it's three up and three down for the Solons in the top of the second. Great play by Asia there, getting yeah. the tag down. Great play. Our sponsors once again today are Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching Hazen Union Varsity Boys Bas Baseball on HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Liz on camera, Mike Demand Baker assisting me with commentary. I'm Lance Hall with the call. Sun out now for a little bit. <laughs> I found out over the last couple days talking to a few Hazen students that there is some, some of our girls playing varsity softball they at are. People's Academy. So okay. I'm going to try to find out the names of those <laughs> girls yeah. fairly soon. But but uh, if you want to watch them play, you can catch up with them. Um, they're playing on the People's Academy girls team. and good opportunity for people to go out and support them. Absolutely. I think it's nice that you can go out and, and play a sport that you like. That way, you know, other schools sort of accepting it. You know, we saw it happen here when Crestbury sent Lizzie Brown and her sister down right. for basketball right. and soccer. You know? Right. And I know uh, my daughter Lydia was very thankful to compete uh, in gymnastics this past winter as part of the St. J Academy. That's great that she did so. that. That was, that was fun, wasn't it? Oh, it was amazing. Amazing. It sounded like you had some late night trips and some pretty uh, bad roads at times coming back. Uh, I had a couple. Not Nothing like what my wife had, though. Uh, uh, total, total kudos to my wife. She did a lot more driving and made a lot more trips and drove on a lot worse roads than I did. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun. Asia Gold. Gould, Asia Gould, at the plate now. Again, Gould just ending the last inning with a nice tag on the runner going down to first base. And I always like to point this out, a little bittersweet for me, Asia is the last of the Lakeview Laker oh. athletes that I remember from when my kids were there. Yeah, yes. That'll tip back. Missed, I didn't hear a clunk. One and two, your counts. Asia strikes out. Once again, pitcher Keegan Smith, a sophomore, looking strong. Brings up Dan DeGroslier, a junior, for the Wildcats. DeGroslier, shot to the second baseman, throw over. Trinkle makes the play. DeGroslier goes out. And I don't know if you were in town or not, when she was here at Hayes and his, I, I, let me try and think of the lineage here. I believe it was Dan's aunt, Jen. Jen grows there. Oh, amazing athlete. So I attended, I went to school at People's Academy and I went to a lot of varsity girls games, of course, when I was going there. Yeah. And uh, got to see Jen play as a Hazen Wildcat when she was in high school and she was amazing to watch. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Total dedication. Wyatt Flanders takes strike two, or strike one. Looks like the count is one and one, if I'm reading the scoreboard right. Yep, yes, one and one. Flanders, strike two. Pretty darn good soccer player, and an uh, amazing 
basketball player was Jeff. I always knew when Hazen was coming to town to play when she was playing there that you were going to get to see a good show from the way she played. Yeah. Yeah. Lander swings and takes strike three, and that's going to end the inning for the Cats. <laughs> the score is still two zip. We'll move on to the third inning. All right, top of the third here back at Hudson Fields. And I believe this is the pitcher up now. Is that a number two on the back of his? Oh, yes, it is. Keegan Smith, a sophomore who has pitched a pretty darn good game here today. Yeah, really. Big Lance, cut there. Really, Lance, he could have got out of that without giving up any runs. Yeah. A few more yeah. plays in the field. and Right. There was that sort of misplay, miscommunication right, and on, a couple, on the James Montgomery end. Right, and a couple near pickoffs. Yep. All right, yeah, he darn near came very close to getting Tyler twice up there right. at second. Yes. Then they, we thought they had him in their sights there on the rundown. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to help his own cause. That shot right at Asia though. Aisha, really solid first baseman over there. And this brings us back up to the top of the order, the senior, Taylor Nunley. That pitch high and inside. Just ticked him, I guess. Mm -hmm. Barely hit his uniform going to take his base and get on. And Brayden Adams, the senior. What the bloody devil? That shot fell. Speaking of the king, have we heard anything from the king lately? You know, I saw, I saw him today at work. You did? He, uh, I think he got to play golf last night, so oh, nice. always makes him happy. Exactly. I think actually tonight is golf night for him. Strike two on Adams. Probably enjoying a little time out of the bunker. <laughs> that pitch high, runner goes, throw down, bounces away. And look like Nunley, Cook wanted Nunley to take third on that. Right. Had Baker and Zendik, good position backing up there to prevent that. So Nunley steals second. Adams still at the plate. Your count is uh, one and two with one out here in the third. And he struck him out. And now the very tall Andrew Tringle comes to the plate. Strike one. And that's a high, high hit to the infield. Davison calls for it, makes the play to make the third out. And, and another very good inning from Reed yeah, Bart. basically, what? Yeah, just one batter got on. Yes. Yep. I was thinking three up, three down, but no, one batter got on. Yeah. He's really pitching well today. He is doing well. So we go to the middle of the third with the Cats up two zip. They'll come up to bat next. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. They support Hazen Athletics. And DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching Hazen Varsity Boys Baseball on HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Liz on camera, Lance Hall with the call, and Mike Demand Baker on the call as well. 
So Lance, have you got a chance to watch any major league games this year? I have watched a number of Blue Jays games. I forgot they were on last night. Wow. But I have watched a number of, I, I wanted to try and follow Toronto. Uh, just as well, I didn't watch them last night because I see they lost. But yeah, I've watched a little bit. Yeah, they beat up on my Red Sox last week. They definitely beat up on them. That they did. That they did. You heard about the new technology they're using at all to the signs between pitchers and catchers? No. So they have this new new technology called Pitchcom, and uh, instead of call, using signs for the catcher to give the pitchers, the catcher actually has a wristband and he can pick what pitch on the wristband, and it actually goes into the pitcher's. Um, hat and the pitcher can hear what pitch he's calling. Really? Wow. That is amazing. That is amazing. Some new technology for sure. All right, so we've got what, top of the order here? Is this Tyson up? Tyson. Here in the bottom of the third, Cats looking to add to their lead maybe. See what happens. Strike two. That pitch high. Well, that one off his foot. That'll sting. Yeah, that hurts for sure. Especially on what we'll call sort of a, a chilly day today. It is. I think the temperature's dropped yeah. 10 degrees in the last 20 minutes here. I'm glad I told Lydia to keep the wood fire going. Yes, wise decision. You're a very oh, smart man off. to do that, Lance. Very <laughs> smart man. Well, we have to be very smart, very prepared. <laughs> At all times. <laughs> At all times. Tucker Cat is fueled. <laughs> Count it two and two. Struck him out. T-Rex, Tyler Revard. Montpelier pitcher here struck out five of the last six Hazen batters, so he's really starting to settle in here. He is grooving out there. Revard hit a hard single to left his first time. Once again, uh, Smith's a sophomore, so looking good for a youngster out there. Sure is. Revard, there's a long shot out to center. Can of corn, as they say, for the center fielder. That's Will Talbert out there in center. And a good play by Talbert. Again, with this wind swirling around, everything hit in the air is a challenge. Jazz up to bat next. And he walked the last time up. Takes a cut. It's a shot to short. Player falls, throws it. Wow, what a play. What a play by their nice shortstop. Play. Wow. That is uh, Cabot Hart at short. He threw that one from his posterior over there. You don't see that play every day. You don't see it. And that will end the uh, third. We'll move to the fourth here with the Cats leading to zip. All right, top of the fourth, Will Talbert, Talbert who had the nice catch on Revard's high fly. There in the bottom of the third, up to the plate now. Revard's still on the mound. That one's hit to Jazz. Jazz over to Gold. Asia with the play. One out. Cabot Hart, who just made the third out in the bottom of the third on a great throw that he caught it short from a sitting position. 
throwing it around. That's a strong yeah, guy. He's a big was, kid, too. That was an amazing play. Takes a big swing for a strike one right there. Fast-moving game today, Mike. It really is. Last night in the rain and 40-degree weather seemed to go on and on. And today, and on a beautiful day, it's flying right by. Strike two for Hart. Well, that's okay. There's four Stanley Cup playoff games on tonight. Who's your team? Who's your NHL team? <laughs> they did not make the cut this year. I've been a Canadians fan since I was in fifth grade. So. Did not quite make the cut. Uh, I haven't decided to. You know, I always root for a Canadian team. And this is sort of sacrilege to say, being a Canadians fan. But I would love to see, you know, Edmonton, Toronto. I want to see the Cup go back to Canada. I haven't. I don't follow it. Oh, there's a shot. Foul. Just foul. Um, yeah, I don't follow the NHL at all. Are the Bruins in it this the Bruins year? Are they in the, the playoffs now? The Bruins are in it. They got beat by Carolina last night, game one of their series. And I, and I think it's been a little bit of a rough go at it for Boston fans lately then with the Bruins loss, the Celtics loss, the playoff game the other night, and the yeah. Red Sox have been struggling. Hopefully the Celtics can turn it around yeah, in their next the one. Celtics. Did not look good against the Bucks in Ooh, game one. Boy. That was ugly. That was. Hard at the bat. Full count. Kind of lays it down. Mm. Gold makes the play. Yep. Two outs. Nice play by Asia. Just sort of half chopped at it there. Oh, another good pitch from Revard. Nate Groff, the sophomore, up now. Two outs, top of the fourth. Cat still with the 2 0 lead. Strike. One and one the count. That pitch high. Two and one. My friends in the MLB. Ball three, just a hair high. Groff takes his base, draws the walk. I don't think Tyler's issued too many walks today, has he? Oh, I was trying to think of that, Lance. I wish I had a, wrote that down. Yeah. I don't think there's been many. No. Really hasn't allowed many base runners at all. No. Nick Rubin, the sophomore. back no cars <laughs> we'll see if Montpelier tries to be aggressive here and get one in yeah, runner in scoring position there. he looks kind of speedy there's a oh, shot oh, into the gap top shot falls in front of Flanders and they're going to run the runner in as Montpelier gets on the board now. Nate Groff scores on a long shot to the gap there. That ball was hit hard. Well-placed hit. Nice aggressive base running there as well. Jason Harry's up now, senior. Fire! 
And the Montpelier bench comes alive now over there. A lot of chatter coming out of the yeah. crowd. And the Hazen one almost uncharacteristic. Well, they're all on the field. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of quiet up there, but they're all on the field. Yeah. Trying to see if um, Hazen's ace of their pitching staff, Lyle Rooney, is down there. He kind of suffered a bad sprain yesterday during the game. Mm. Throw to first. Yeah. Get back. Good snap throw from Montgomery. Almost got him. Keep it Ruben close over there. Two outs. Hey, two we got. Strike. Nice off speed pitch. Counts at two and two. And he struck yeah. him out. Big strikeout by Revert. <laughs> to end Montpelier's side of the inning. Move to the middle of the fourth. The Cats up two to one now as Montpelier gets on board in that inning. Sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and the DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching Hazen Union Wildcat Baseball here on HCTV Channel 1080. Mike Demand Baker on commentary. Liz on tech and camera. Lance Hall with the call. All right, bottom of the fourth. Solins cut into the catch lead by putting a run up there. See what happens here. James Montgomery up. Two to one your score, bottom of the fourth. James hit a lot hard line shot. Yeah, he was the one who basically created the scoring opportunities did. with that shot right at the, uh, I think it was the second baseman or the shortstop that yeah. couldn't quite handle it. Yeah. See if the Hazen bats can get going. If my stats are correct, Montpelier pitcher has set down eight Wildcats in a row. Shot high, Trinkle ch gives chase, but backs off. And Harris gets ahead in the count. 0-2. Oh right? oh, excuse me, Smith. Keegan Smith is the pitcher. I don't know where I got Harris from. And he goes down, swinging. Jaden Baker up now. Trying to get something going here. Baker takes strike one. One and one the count. Pitch high. Went inside. Should be ball four. I was going to say, I thought that was ball four as well. Andrew Menard comes up. And 
and now the Hazen bench comes along. <laughs> now that they're over there and not out on the field. <laughs> Andrew the Waller Menard. Menard takes strike one. Now I gotta wonder, Mike, <clears throat> in, in my only experience of ever playing a sport was that game that Menard shot up the gap. Oh, makes a play. Crossover. Oh, yeah. Menard on. <clears throat> that was a perfect hit and run, Lance. Yeah, it was. Andrew thought, put it in a good spot, which with Jaden running, the shortstop was drawn over to second base. Work, worked Hart out great. had to throw back across his body. Yeah, Asia almost, Gould. Made, almost made another great play. I thought play. he was gonna. Asia Gould up to plate now. You and I played together oh, a few years ago when the Harlem Wizards came up here and played <laughs> basketball. That was the only time I ever was ever out on the court. Like I said, I was never much of an athlete. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Double steal. More aggressive haze and base running. And But the one thing I remember was the minute I stepped out onto the court, I didn't hear a thing from the crowd. It's like everything went silent. Yeah, you kind of get in that zone out and, there. And I got to wonder if it's the same thing being up here to play. You know, Asia's going to play. The guys are all over here in the dugout just, you know, <laughs> sounded like the seagulls in the Finding Dory movie. Yeah. Do you hear them or do yeah. you not? Yeah, that's you know? a good question. That's a good question. Do you even hear what they're saying or are you kind of you – know, I, I, for me, I would with a pitcher throwing – a hard sphere at me. <laughs> I would want to be as much focused on him as I could. Oh, right, right. You know? No, I think they definitely try to lock in. You know, and, and vice versa. Does the pitcher here? You know, or is he so locked in trying to maintain on the catcher? Yeah, yeah. I, I know that night, it was like I said, it was my only experience ever doing it. And the minute I stepped out on the court, it's like I went deaf. Yeah, yeah. No, I think they definitely try to lock in and shut as much of it out as you can. One out, runners at second and third for the Cats. Looking to build that lead back up a little bit here in the bottom of the fourth. Asia has worked the count to uh, two and one. Asia squares up, tries to bunt. They're going to catch... Uh, Baker in the rundown here. And Menard, I think, wisely does not try to get to third. Jaden got caught with the leadoff as Asia leaned out to try and hit the bunt. Couldn't quite get it. That pitch was way outside. Not a real good bunt pitch to go after, yeah. I, I yep. don't think, in my limited baseball knowledge. Looks like that probably was a squeeze play set up by the coaches. I mean, if it had hit it, it would have been perfect. Right. But. Couldn't quite right. come up with a bunt. Kind of left Baker's in no Baker in no man's land, and now Gold swings away. Asha Gould, and that'll be an out, and that will end the inning. As the Cats strand a runner on, and we get and Jaden gets caught there between uh, third and home. Score still two one. We'll be back at the top of the fifth. Good pitch by Revert on the corner. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Hey, get that one a shower. Are we? All right, we're here at the top of the fifth. <laughs> uh, as uh, who is up to who is up to bat here? I, I'm like, I think this is their pitcher. Okay, Keegan Smith, who's been pitching well. How many guys lined them up and sent them down here lately? I had a bit of an issue with my cell phone here in between innings. Somehow I inadvertently called 911. I don't know how the thing's sitting here in my cup holder, but. We interrupt this broadcast for a bogus 911 call. The guy was real cool about it. I'm like, I have no idea the thing's sent here. He says, do you have any emergency? I said, well, we just, you know, I just, 
I don't know if he'd have frowned or not if I'd have said, well, we just left a runner on. <laughs> uh, top of the order, Taylor Nutley, the senior at the plate. So we try and compose ourselves here. Uh, bless us all, it wasn't live. <laughs> Nutley, there's a shot. Asia looks like he has this one on. Oh. Wind blew it out of play. What's that chance the kids do at the baseball games? Check your voicemail? <laughs> <laughs> Missed well, a call. I don't know if I'll get through this inning. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? Top of the fifth from Hudson Fields. Asia Union High School, Hard Vermont. <laughs> Excuse us all while we chuckle. <laughs> we're not laughing at anything on the field. We're laughing at my ineptitude up here. <laughs> Just call turn, me. Turn, turn some heads, people are watching. <laughs> Just call me David Copperfield. It's magic. It's okay. These guys could be going back to Chile. Or who's the other guy who was doing the David Blaine? Oh, David Blaine. Yeah. yeah. Look, I'll yeah. dial 911 without touching my phone. <laughs> Nunley takes that one low. He's going to take a base. Way to keep it in America. The only thing I'm thinking, Mike, is I got it set in here, and I wonder. It's kind of a tight squeeze in here. You know, sometimes when you hit the two buttons at the same time, I wonder if that's what happened. You know, if I put my arm down and it squeezed it or something. It had to have been it. Yeah, I mean, I literally didn't have the phone anywhere near, my fingers anywhere near that. I didn't even have my oh, dial pad on. Look, look on your face. Look on your face. <laughs> of course, here in the shadow of the vortex, you do have to be ready. There's a shot up to left. Nunley's going to go around second and hold up. As the ball comes in. Good play by DeGroslier to get it in quickly. And so Adams and Nutley on the on first and second. This brings up Andrew Tringle. Revar could really use a strikeout or a ground ball here. Double play or something like yep. that. Ball gets by Montgomery, runners advance. That went a little bit high. All right, Mike, I've got my face plate on my phone. It's on my hip. There's a liner into center. Nobody there to make the play. Nunley's going to score. In comes Adams. And just like that, the Solids go up. 3-2 here against the Wildcats. At the top of the fifth inning. Tringle on first. Will Talbert. Talbert. Yeah, that was a solid shot. Solid shot. Hit right, well. right into the gap. Right into the gap. Now we know they're undefeated. Have the Cats trailed it all this year? They have. They actually trailed early in the last two games they were behind. Really? Okay. Um, I don't believe they've trailed this late in the game, though. Talbert up. Revard delivers. Strike one. Pitch by Revard. Strike two. Swing and a miss. Well, come on. You got it. 
call time by the home plate umpire. You say nine, come on. Talbert, swing, strike three. Big out for Tyler yeah, Reaver. Big strike out there. Got him on the high heat. Cabot Hart. Senior for the Solids up now. Tringle on first, two outs, top of the fifth. Solids have taken the lead, 3-2. Off that big hit by Tringle that scored Adams and Nunley. It's a shot to third. And Iron can't come up with it. Tringle yeah. advances to second. Another pretty hard hit ball there. Nate Groff, a sophomore. And Rivard, who's pitched a great game thus far, is trying to get this third out. Get out of here. And Hope the Hazen Bass can come back alive. Yeah. But I'll tell you, uh, the uh, pitcher there from Montpelier, uh, this is Keegan Smith has been pitching. It's definitely the toughest time they've had scoring runs this year. The pitch by Revart. One and two the count. Tyler looking for that third strike. And they're saying he went around. And Groff almost, you know, he didn't really contest a whole lot. Yeah. So we move to the bottom of the fifth. Malpier takes the lead there in the top of the fifth. And to we'll, uh, go ahead 3-2. Yeah, and we'll see if Hazen can get their bats going here. Here in the bottom of the fifth. You're watching Hazen Union Wildcat Baseball on HGTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hgtv.us. Liz on camera, Lance Hall with the call, and Mike Demand Baker on commentary as well. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. And I think, Lance, I need to go to the car and get another layer here. I was just wondering if I had a pair of gloves in my car, but I'll, I'll be okay. I got, I got pockets. Yep. Dan DeGrosley up here in the bottom of the fifth, working down towards the bottom of the order. Let's see if they can't. Dig the cats out of this one run hole that they put themselves in. They're in the fourth. Good ball game here from Hudson Field this afternoon. Pitch outside, two and one. Smith still on the mound for the Solids. He's pitched well. Chopper, second baseman over, makes the play over to first to get the first out. This will bring up Wyatt Flanders. High and outside. Ball two. Landers is really trying hard to get on base here and turn the lineup over with Davison on deck. Groff wants to go out, have a word 
third with his pitcher, Keegan Smith, as Flanders stands in at 2-0. One out, bottom of the fifth. Ball Good three. eye by Flanders. Yeah, get Flanders on and bring up Tyson and Tyler. Jazz, the top of the lineup. I'm right, we can't right. get something rolling here. Cats looking for a couple runs to go back ahead. That went in for a strike. Nice pitch by Smith. Ball four, Flanders gets on, draws the walk. Yeah, that was a great at bat by Flanders. And Coach Cook wants to go out and talk to Smith as well. Smith has pitched phenomenal here today. Oh, he's had a great game, great game. And only a sophomore. Lance, I just had to put the extra layer on and a pair of gloves. <laughs> yeah, it was almost kind of hot when we got here today at, uh, for the opening pitch, but then now the clouds have come back over. Yeah. I hear we've got one more day of rain tomorrow, and then we're supposed to have some real nice weather for about a week. Looks like mid-70s by yeah. Tuesday next week. And I'll tell you, Mike, this is the kind of game. There was an old-timer here in town. Years ago, you, I, I doubt you probably ever heard of this guy. He, he and his wife, were, he was a custodian in a couple of the elementary schools. And I think his wife, I think she taught, I want to say Woodbury. Uh, throw over to first, Flanders gets back. Their names were Helen and Sanford Dix, and they were as salt of the earth of a, of a couple as you could ever first meet. Teacher. Helen Dix. Helen Dix was your first grade <laughs> teacher? And I hung out a lot with her husband, Sanford. He was a custodian. He, he, I know he, back when, when Hardwick Elementary used to send kids up to the East Hardwick School. Oh, okay. And he was a custodian up there, and I would help him go up and we'd wax floors and stuff. Just a great old time character. And he was a baseball fan. And he always loved 1-0, 2-1, 3-2, you know, low-scoring games like this. Boy, just an all-around great guy. So you had Helen for your first grade teacher. That's right. She worked for us in our first store when we, had, we owned what is M&M Market now was M&M Market then. And she worked for us during the summer, you know, when school was out. And uh, just a, they lived in a, in a house up Mackville Road, up the, up the what do they call the Cary Road, up off of there. And uh, just two nicer people you never would have met in your life. They, they've since passed on, but Sanford would, would be loving watching this game. Big time Red Sox fans. Well, he'd be enjoying this. Oh, it is. Good. Oh. Nice play by the center fielder. Well, Flanders better hustle back. Oh, worked out good. The play was over. Uh -huh. Tyson, nice hit, but uh, uh -huh. the center fielder in to make the play. Uh -huh. Very fortunate for Montpelier that, that that throw to first hit the dugout and didn't go out of play. Right. Talbert with sort of a wild throw back to first. Joe Rivera telling Wyatt to stand still. Two outs now. Bottom of the fifth. Rivard up. Rivard looking to help his own cause here. He can hit like he did last time. Didn't he have the long out, long hit? I mean, last time. He he singled, singled early in the game and hit a solid fly ball to center field. Okay. that was caught. I'm thinking of the single. Yeah, that was hit solid. That one fouled back. One and one, you count. So yeah, talking about not a lot of runs being scored in Red Sox this year. 
Having a hard time scoring more than one or two a game. Hit a ton over into foul territory. Yeah. I don't think he's going to get to it. Good hustle by the right fielder over there. Yeah, you got to be able to, got to be able to get more than one or two on board unless you've got an outstanding defense in baseball. Yes. That one down in the dirt. Flyunders does go to second. Count three and two on Revard. Two outs, bottom of the fifth. Cats trail by one. Flanders on second. Tyler Revard at the plates. Smith high. Revard's going to take his base. Flanders going to go down to third. And he gets out. And Spencer's having a word with the ump, but I, from my vantage point, it looked like he got yeah. it. Yeah, yep. Spencer must have another angle there, yeah. but from here, it looked like they got him. Could almost hear it hit him when it came Spencer's still talking to the ump, but I don't think he's going to get him to change his mind. If Flanders is going to come off, we're going to move to the sixth here with the yeah. catch trailing by one. We have Coach Revard down there discussing it with the other umpire. <laughs> Top of the six here from Hudson Fields, Nick Rubin, as we move down through the bottom of the order. For the Solens, and Mike, that was a good break there for that inning. I did not dial 911 on my phone. <laughs> Success. <laughs> no, most people order pizza between innings, but not you. If you no, just, take it to a different level. I do, I do. I just go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> Count looks to me, it's, uh, is that a three and one over there or a two and one? I can't quite make it. I think it's a two and, two and one. Two and one, I think. How about a two and two? Revard's continuing to look strong here. Both pitchers have been doing well. I say the bulk of the runs have been scored off of like fielding right. uh, oddities. Right, right. Or solid hitting. Yes. Another strikeout for Revard. We've seen some great hits. We've seen some sort of wacky plays. Yeah. Runners getting not getting picked off when they should be and getting picked off when coaches are saying they weren't. Typical baseball. Yes. Yep. Jason Harris. Senior. Back on the bank. One and one with one out, top of the sixth. Cats trail three to two. Good baseball game here from Hudson Field. Really is. Afternoon. The Montpelier Solens came to play. Jazz with the play over to Gold. Gets it by a couple of steps. Two another, outs. Another nice play at short from Jazz. Revert could use a one, two, three inning as well, I believe. He sure could. Keegan Smith, the pitcher, up to bat now. Not sure what pitch count is for the most pi both pitchers, but it's got to be getting up there a little bit. Ball one. There's a shot out to left. Uh, it could be trouble. Again, good job by Dan DeGrosier getting it in quickly. Holding him to just a single. Well, the one thing, Mike, if we do get any precipitation, I don't think we've got to worry about rain. I think it's going to I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. 
Nick Nunley, Pires. Top of the order. <laughs> Taylor Nunley, the senior, with two outs and a man on. That one cut back as well. Avoids the cars again. It's trying to remember if I've seen any broken windshields here in the past. I, I, don't, yeah, I haven't been to a, too many ball games yeah, up here. I can't, can't recall one. But It's the first time for everything, Mike, now that Ooh. you've said that. Ooh. Just missing from Revard. Just one. missing. That one up over his head. That's going to send uh, Smith down to second. Taylor ducking down on that one. Two and two. Runner at second. Did you see that? the one thing in, in the MLB? I can't remember the team, but they've been hit by a, a number of pitches this season. Is oh, really? It, one certain it, team has, One certain huh? team, and they're blaming it on the baseballs huh. that the MLB is using. Huh. I forget how many guys have been hit. Strike three. Tyler takes him down looking. Yeah, another solid inning for Revart. So we will move to the bottom of the six now. The Cats once again looking to cut in and uh, get over this lead right now. Good baseball game once again. Montpelier Solens and the Hazen Boys. Our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching Hazen Varsity Baseball on HCTV Channel 1080, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Liz on camera, Lance Hall with the call, Mike Baker here along with the call, and Liz now has had a memory confirmed from going up to Helen and Sanford's house. They lived out on the end of a dead end. They had huge gardens up there, huge gardens. Um, I remember going up there one year for the 4th of July. I must have had 5,000 firecrackers. <laughs> 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 and we lit them all off up there. We, I, you know, I was maybe, how old was I? Not a lot, 12, 13 maybe. Uh, we had more fun that afternoon up there with them. Just two of the nicest people you'd ever want to meet in your life. Oh, sounds like good, good, good times. She was, she was a great teacher. She had a grab bag that I remember being pretty excited about. Oh, really? When you got all your, I don't know what we did. You got our spelling right or something. Got to go into the grab bag. Nice. <laughs> nice. Who knows what was in it? Funny shaped erasers or something. Something <laughs> that makes a first grader real excited. Yeah, and, and in addition to... Uh, to Sanford being a good Red Sox fan, he was, he was a very good hunter as well. He was a great outdoorsman. Hunted everything under the sun. It's turkey season now, I think. That's Garth. right. I, spring season, spring yeah. turkey hunting. Yeah, I know. I uh, believe I saw Sully Laflem with one Sunday morning when I was walking yeah. my dog. And I know uh, Jaden Baker and Andrew Menard had them the other day. They were showing me pictures and nice, yeah, pretty neat stuff. Yeah, I was never much of a hunter. No, I mean I tried it once. I get it. I totally get how anyone could totally enjoy it. It just oh, wasn't yeah. my cup of tea. Yeah, being out in the woods like that is going to be great. Yeah. Jazz up to bat here, bottom of the six. Opportunity starting to dwindle a little bit here for the Cats. Jazz has reached base one time with a walk. And is this a different pitcher or the same one? You know what? They have a I different think they pitcher have in pitchers. Here. I think that's Cabot Hart in there right now. Cabot Hart. A little adjustment for the Hazen batters after they've seen a lefty for the first five innings. and Now they switch to right. Right, yep. Ball gets through the infield. 
Yes, well played single for Jazz. Jazz on, that brings up James Montgomery. Man on, nobody out. Bottom of the sixth. Montgomery fouls one back. And again, James had a solid hit his first time up, helping account for Hazen's two runs. See if he can do it again here. Throw to first, Jazz back. Jazz takes yeah. off, throw down, stolen base. Good work by Jazz there. Got a good jump. Nice throw, just Jazz had gotten a pretty good yeah, jump out there. Sure That's a great throw. Montgomery now with a runner on second, down 0-2 in the count. Montgomery chopper. Yeah, that's Stays gonna work there. well. That's gonna work well. And we got runners at the corners now. That's Tringle now playing. Tringle's now moved over. Is that that was number 13, right? Yeah. Who is Tringle? So he has moved over to third, and I cannot quite see who's on first now oh, for the I Solids. Can't, can't get can't the number. Tell. We'll have to try it. I thought when he came up throwing, I'm like, that's. Runner goes. Bunt down. <sighs> throw to home. Got it. Bang, bang, play. Yeah, another attempt by Hazen to squeeze bunt a run home. Catch Jazz at home plates. Great, great play by the really was. Heads up. So one out, we still got runners at first and second. Andrew the Mahler behind up. Runners go. Yeah, good speed on the bases there. And that is Keegan Smith, the pitcher, over on first. The former pitcher over on first now for the Solids. Menard, right on Tringle. All right. Tringle over to Smith for one out. We score one, though, and the runner goes to third. So we'll take the out, advance the runners, get a run, and tie this thing up at three apiece. And Aisha Gould. Up to bat now with two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Got the Hazen bench really getting into it now. Definitely hear the chatter. <laughs> Indeed. That one fell back. Baker's on. Come, gonna score, throw late. Did they get him? Oh my gosh. I thought he was safe. Oh boy. Spencer's gonna discuss this one. 
I'd like to but see a replay on it. Would. But what, an, what another great play by the Montpelier shortstop. Yeah. Wow, he has made two great and I, plays. And, and Hart is pitching now, so I haven't, I haven't picked up on who's playing short yet. But whoever they've got in there is playing pretty darn well. So we thought that uh, we were going to be safe there at first on that hit. Yeah. We were going to score a run and maybe go ahead. Instead, it stands 3-3. And we will move to the seventh inning. All right, here we go, top of the sixth. Brayden Adams up for the Solids. No. Don't listen to me. Away, away team bats first. Oh, sorry. So top of the sixth. Or didn't we just have the sixth? Is this the seventh? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the support part. Uh, yeah. I'm confused. Yeah, Mike, this is the top of the seventh, right? Because we just had the sixth. Because when Hayes had come up, I said our chances are dwindling. I, remember, I thought we had six outs. So I, I, I believe this is the, I believe this is the top of the seventh. I think. Yeah. Anyways, Adams gets a hit out there to left. Mike, you've got some names of some girls playing softball? I do. These are our Hazen softball players. Lily Hayden, Marta Moss, Eleanor Andronali, Sarah Collier, Bailey Christensen, and Haley Mitchard, all playing with the people's team in Morrisville. That's awesome. It is. That's a good group. Yeah. Six of them playing. That's great. And runner's going to go to second on that pitch. Nice play by Tyson to keep it in the infield. Tringle. Up on Tyler. 2-0 count. And the scoreboard has changed. This is the top of the seventh. I thought it was. Tringle calls time. So Adams on second, Tringle at bat, and this is the top of the seventh. Tringle takes a strike, count at two and one. And this is the top of the seventh, Mike. It is the top of the seventh. Yeah. All right. Revert still is throwing well. Still got the heat going. Three and one. Tringle takes his base. Uh, just missing. So runners at first and second. This is Will Talbert, a junior. And they're using a pinch runner. Let me go to the program here. Number five for Montpelier is Jeffrey Harris. All right, so Harris is going in to run. Adams will come off. Coach Cook looking, I guess, to put some speed on the bases. Talbert at the plate. No outs. Top of the seventh. Game tied 3-3. Foul tip. 0-1. Pitch high. Let's go, Will. Come on. You got it. Swing and a miss. One and two, the counts. Come on, Will. Let's go. 
Strike three. Yeah. Big strikeout for Rivard there. Get that first out. And Coach Spencer Howard is headed out to the mound. Cabot Hart was about to come to the plates. The way Tyler threw the ball down, I think we're in for a pitching change. Yeah, he may have reached his limit of pitches because he was still throwing strong. I know I've about reached my limit of wind chills. Oh, here. man. The boys play Thursday at Lake Region, and it's looking like a nicer day for Gonna that game. Going to be a game. nice game up there, yeah. Yeah, after this, they go on the road for three games. All right, turkey ball charge. They're all turkey relatives. They will be at Lake Region this coming Thursday. Next Monday, they go to Danville. Tuesday, they're at North Country. And then on Thursday, May 12th, we come back home against Spalding, and I believe we play here on Saturday the 14th as well. Got to love Saturday games. I love them as a parrot. What a great, great thing to do in the middle of a Saturday. Watch some baseball. It's awesome. So it looks like Jazz Zendik in there to pitch. Jazz is going to pitch, okay. By saying the last name correctly, I'm not... No I have I'm no clue. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have absolutely no clue, Mike. Sounds good to me. Let's look at the official spelling. Z-E-N-D-I-K. I go hey, with Zendik. all right. Saturday the 14th, we'll be hosting U32. First pitch at 11. And then on Tuesday the 17th, another home game against Oxbow. So. Yeah, some tough ones coming up, just like yeah. today has been. Really well pitched game by both teams here. Yeah, both both uh, Tyler and uh, Smith went a long way. Well, they did. Game. Yeah, absolutely. Pitched well. Very good games for both of them. Jazz has pitched once this year. He pitched Saturday. Over in Northfield in the game I was at, he pitched a solid two innings, not giving up any runs. Well, he's got his work uh, cut out for him a little bit here. We got runners at first and second, one out. Will Talbot, Talbert, a junior, coming up now. Talbot, high shots. Players giving chase. Oh, would have been a nice second out to have. Ball drops in. Yeah, another one that the wind kind of took. It's like Joe Rivard directing the outfielders. Oh, nice off speed step pitch by Jazz. Be nice to get the outs or even nicer to get a double play here. Oh, double this. play would be great. Talbert's foul. Counted 0 and 2. Jazz delivers. Hot. 1 and 2. 1 out, top of the seventh. Tie game, 3 3. That one low. Runners are going to advance. Runners at second and third now with one out and a count of two and two. Good effort by Montgomery. To Will Talbert. And 
Zendik and the Wildcats would really could really use a strikeout here. You hear Coach Cook saying, "Ball and play." That's all you yeah. want to do. Be interesting. Bad it looks on. like that he's an infield. His come in a little bit so guarding against the bunt um, and also so if a ground ball goes to him they'll have a chance at the guy at the plate at the plate okay <laughs> Talbert keeps himself alive come on Kevin Strike three. Yeah. Big strikeout there. Big strikeout. Right, goes down swinging. Nate Groff hitting in the sixth spot, the sophomore. <laughs> Two outs now. Runners at second and third. Jazz in relief of Tyler Revard. Tyler overplaying shortstop. Shortstop, yeah. So I think that was a change. They just switched positions there. And Ball goes by Montgomery, runners hold. Uh, good hustle by Montgomery and a good job by Jazz covering. I think a wise decision there by Coach Cook yeah, to hold his runners. Yeah, yeah, I as think much as you want to come in and you know put your team ahead. Not the way a team wants to get a third out if you're hitting for sure. Definitely. Especially with what, a 2 0 count? Right. 3 0. And we've got an intentional walk. This is going to bring up Nick Rubin now. If I remember right, Rubin got a hit last time, didn't he? Yeah, I can't, can't remember, but I trust your memory, Lance. I remember, I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I want to say he got on last time. Yeah, good possibility there. Base so is loaded. So now he's in benefit as a force at every base. Um, tough thing is, is Jazz is forced to throw strikes here. high. It looks like the Hazen infield is more moved back um, to normal positions. Boy, that didn't miss by much. Two and all your counts to Ruben. Two and one. Ooh. Three and one. That was darn Ooh. close. <clears throat> now, if you're Ruben, you're pretty much obvious take all the way. Two. Now what Good do you pitch do, Mike? Here. Good pitch. I think as a pitcher, you have to go right after him. And as a hitter? As a hitter, you're looking to swing at anything close. Yeah! Struck him out. Yeah. Great job by Jazz here in relief. Great job. And I was watching as Ruben went back over. Coach Cook just kind of gave him a pat on the back. And, you know, next time. What great, do you do? right. Great pitch. Absolutely was. So we're going to move to the bottom of the seventh with a tie score. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. 
Our sponsor is Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hayes and Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. Liz on camera. Lance Hall with the call and Mike Demand Baker on commentary as well. And if there is a baseball god at all, he will get us a run early. Yes. <laughs> Let me go home and sit by my fire. Boy, this is great. Home team in the bottom of the last of inning the seventh, with a yeah. chance to win it. Looks like uh, is that Dan DeGrosley are going to be coming yeah. up to bat first. So we are at the bottom of the lineup. Yeah. But, uh, you know, well, Dan's been swinging great things a, can happen. Yeah. Dan's been swinging a good bat this year, and Wyatt got, Wyatt on, base got on base last, last time. time yeah. So... Start to shiver a little bit, Lance. Yeah, yeah. I've basically got on a T-shirt underneath this sweatshirt. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Okay, Dan, swing mighty and straight and hard. We are going to be a, uh, as big a couple of homers as we can oh, be absolutely. from the bottom of this thing. <laughs> Get us home. I am two episodes into the final batch of Ozark on Netflix, yeah. and tonight would be a pretty darn good time to knock off a couple more. <laughs> oh, and two. Yeah, Montpelier pitcher out here dealing strikes. What's yep. his name again? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah. Saw him make some fantastic plays at short. Now he's going to try and make some plays at pitcher as well. Goes yeah. swing. He dropped down yeah. on that. He went sidearmed. And I am not going to play spoiler at all, but let me just tell you, the, if, if the rest of the episodes of Ozark are as good as these first two that I've watched in this final bit, if you're a fan of that show, don't miss them. Yeah, I can't say I've ever watched it. Fantastic. Very dark. Very dark series. <laughs> we but, have a uh, pinch hitter here. Pinch hitter coming up. Is that Jake Davison? No. It is uh, Brandon. Brandon, yes. Looking to put some bulk and some muscle at the plate. Yeah. He had a big pinch hit earlier this year, I believe, the first time we played Montpelier. Pinch hitting for Wyatt Flanders. Take strike one. Chopper, foul. Oh, oh and two. Pop up. Over to here. Brandon, a good battle here. Putting up a good battle. Now we need him to put up a good hit. That one oh. gets through. Crawford on. What a huge hit for Crawford. Absolutely. Man on with one out. Top of the order now, Tyson Davison. And they will send in Wyatt. No, they're not going to send in Wyatt. Who are they going to send in to run? They're going to send somebody in to run. Looks like Fenton Meyer getting ready here. Fenton Meyer? Fenton with some good speed. And I'll tell you, on the bench of the JV team in basketball this year, I don't think there's anyone more vocal than Fenton Meyer. Yeah, he's a great teammate. Always keeping his teammates jacked. Yeah, great teammate. Aware of everything that was going on. 
Definitely. Hart goes right after him over there. Definitely. So Tyson last time up hit a shot to the center fielder, so he hit a really good swing his last time. Big gap in between right and center. It'd be a nice place to place one. He's also got a little bit of room down the right field line as he well. Does. Doing a great job working the count here. Two and all the counts. There's a three. Looks like There's two three. over there. Hart once again to first, Meyer back. Tyson into foul territory and over to make the play. For the second out. That was Smith, <coughs> Keegan Smith with the play. Tyler Revard up, Tyler's chance to be our, our hero. Yeah, he could top off a great day here. Meyer back, ball by, as Meyer, Meyer's gonna go to second. All right, Lance, so, base hit has a good chance of winning it here. That's right, Meyer with good speed. You're right, would be a great way for Tyler to cap his day. And he gets... Hart wanted to go back to second bat. He did. Meyer almost daring him. It looks like they're gonna walk Revard. And uh, that sets up a force for them at first, second, or third. Brings Jazz up to the plate. Now he can help his cause with a hit. And Jazz has walked today and singled, so he's been on base twice. Throw down, runner at third. Hazen not afraid to keep that aggressive streak going. All he's got to do is get his bat on the ball now. Meyer at third, Revard at second. Two outs, nothing on the count yet. Jazz takes strike one. Montpelier's on left side of their infield is in and now they drop back. There's a shot out there. Out to the right, makes the catch. I mean, out there to the left. Oh. Jazz got some good bat on it. Lance, do I sound like a homer with the moan? I Taylor Nunley makes the guy, yeah. Let out after that. That was struck well. It was. No, it was struck well. A little shallower, a little deeper, and yeah. we'd be in our cars. Yes. That was a great at bat by Brandon there. It was. And great, great aggressive base running and, and you know, stealing yeah. and everything to, yeah. to get themselves, they had themselves in the perfect position and Jazz got yeah. the nice hit. Just yeah. unfortunately, the Nunley out there made the play. Looked unfortunately like he, for Montpelier, unfortunately yeah. for us, you know. Looked like he was turned around on that for yeah. a bit of minute. Yeah, he made, made a great recovery. He did. So we move to the eighth. Now let me ask you this, Mike. Do we play until there's a winner or is there a cap on innings? There is not a cap that I'm aware of. I think the only thing that could happen is if you know it gets too dark to be able right. to play. I think there was a game at Peoples 
here against Peoples last year where they won at least nine innings. So I remember that game. Yeah, I kind of had the feeling this would be a tight one after seeing the two teams play earlier this year at Montpelier. Yeah, Montpelier always has good sports teams. Good. Yeah, solid teams down there. Got to see, <coughs> see their soccer team play this year, which was solid. Basketball and their basketball team. team was one of the best teams, regardless of divisions in the state. And then, of course, their baseball team is definitely showing some good play today. So bottom of the order... We're starting towards the bottom of the air order. Uh, Jason Harry is hitting in the number eight slot. Here in the top of the eighth. Strikeouts. Great start for Zendik there. Keegan Smith hitting in the number nine slots. Yo, Keegan, get it started there, Ken. Ball one. Strike one. Strike two. Yeah. Ball. Two and two. Jazz will go right after him on this 3-2 pitch, I'm sure. Strike him out. Two outs. Big strike out there. And here is Taylor Nunley, who just made the play out and left to keep this game going. And here's the scoop, Mike. Middle of this inning, I know I've got a blanket in the trunk of my car. <laughs> Here's my prediction as Nunley takes strike one. If I was not to get it and sit here and continue to be cold, this game would probably go 12 innings. <laughs> I'm thinking if I go over and get it, something might happen. Sounds like a good plan. I think that's going to be the plan. <laughs> Oh, and two to Nunley, two outs, top of the eighth. Score tied 3-3. Three, three. And that'll get us to the middle of the eighth. I tell you what, Mike, I'm going to let you read the sponsors. I'm going to go get that blanket. All right. Game today is sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Eight, call the doctor for your, all your property needs. You're watching HCTV channel 1080, www.hctv.us, and I'm going to uh, try not to mistakenly call 911. <laughs> uh oh, we're going.
All right, James Montgomery will try to get things started here for Hazen. Bottom of the eighth. Score tied 3-3. Three, three. There's a hit. There's a shot. Montgomery digging in for second. Yeah. Throw coming in. Well hit by Montgomery and he aggressive base running when the ball was kind of bobbled in center field. And my strategy right now working to perfection. <laughs> <sighs> Jaden Baker up. Bat on the ball is what we need. Throw back, Montgomery makes it back. Outstanding read on the sponsor, Mike. Hey, I've learned from the pro here. <laughs> Baker squares up, bunts. Down. Montgomery's gonna, almost came home. Uh, Runners at the corners. I don't know if he would have made it. I don't know. Perfectly located bunt by Baker and yeah. good hustle by Montgomery down there. No outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Runners at the corner for Andrew Menard. This really gives Hazen three opportunities to knock Montgomery in and now Menard's intentionally walked. Load up the bases. Asia Gold. What a great moment this would be for the senior, huh? It would be. Bat on the ball. So it looks like Montpelier is bringing their infield and outfield in. Outfield is really shallow, but. And there's a shot. There's a shot. And over. And we're going to score. Nunley can't come up with that one. He's upset after making the great play there. And the bottom of the seventh can't quite come up with it on that one. And Hazen's going to get out of here with a 4-3 win. What a great walk-off win. Big time hit for Asia Gold. He was in position, just couldn't quite come up with it. Yeah, you know, I thought he was going to catch that. but yeah. it, So in tough. the end, Hazen does score. And we win this game 4-3 in the bottom of the eighth. And my strategy worked to perfection, Mike. We owe this all to you, Lance. You can all thank me for this. Yeah. <laughs> What a big hit for Asia. That nice was great. Hit. Nice that hit by great. Asia Gold to get that one. And just a well played baseball game by both teams. So Hazen pushes their record to six and zip. Yeah, great effort by Montpelier. We saw some, some outstanding baseball here today. Push uh, Hazen pushes their record to six and oh. Once again, they'll travel to uh, Lake Region this coming Thursday. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 1080 on your cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Our sponsors today Buffalo Mountain Power Sports. 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance. 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. Liz on camera. Mike, once again, thank you. Hey, thank you, Lance. In. We're having a ball out here doing this. Until we see you again, live every moment, love every day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.